It is, uh, it's the next day. It's Tuesday. Good Tuesday, everybody. Uh, it is a beautiful day. Sun's shining, birds are chirping, and uh, it's going to be a really nice, uh, lovely day today. So, hey, uh, for those of you who happen to be new, if you're catching this and haven't seen it or someone shared it with you, uh, I'm Thad. I'm one of the pastors at Real Life Church in Pullman, Washington. And we get together every Monday through Friday morning for Jesus Time live at 8 a.m. on Facebook. We broadcast it on uh, my personal page, on our Real Life Church page, and then we also archive and share all of them on our YouTube channel for Real Life Church as well. You can find everything about us at rlcpullman, P-U-L-L-M-A-N dot com, rlcpullman dot com. Uh, otherwise, you can just... Uh, be friends with me or follow our page and tune in every um, Monday through Friday at 8. We do a short nugget, like 15 minutes or less. Um, we dig into God's Word. We've been going through the book of Luke, and so that's what we're going to do this morning. I'm going to open us with prayer, and we're going to take a look at a little chunk of Scripture from Luke, talk about it, and uh, send you off and on your way. So let me pray. God, we love you. Thanks for today, for the beautiful sunshine outside, and um, thanks for your word and your spirit. God, guide us, direct us, help us continue to be uh, more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, I want to read uh, Luke 15. We're just doing a little short chunk today. Uh, we started it yesterday. Today's the parable of the lost coin. And so 15.8 says, or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call in her friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is uh, joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. So, it's kind of... Uh, Jesus is doing these parables where he's talking to the Pharisees and religious leaders who are struggling with the fact that he's talking with sinners and tax collectors and not just that they're coming and listening to him teach, um, but that he's associating with them. And so these stories, these parables are um, stories in response to their frustration or anger with him that he associates with, eats with, is friends with, hangs out with, sinners and tax collectors. And he's trying to just keep making this point of like, it, you, you're you missing the point. You don't understand the heart of God. You don't understand the heart of the Father that that when, um, when those the Father loves and cares about are lost, when something that is um, super, super valuable that is lost to the Father, and when it when it's found, there is celebration in heaven. It, it, all the angels around God um, throw a party. I, I just I picture those little things where you blow and the, the little thing rolls out, and it's like the things you give little kids at a birthday party. And having five kids, we had a lot of birthday parties, and I remember having lots of kids at little kid birthday parties where everybody's blowing those horns, and the little things are flipping out and it's like just about enough to drive you a little bit crazy they're having so much fun like uh, like that's the kind of celebrating going on when someone repents and turns from their sin and turns back to god they get back on the path they they're they're uh forgiven and reconciled like made right with god again that um activity on earth triggers a celebration in heaven and i think it's kind of hard to appreciate how good it is to um be found if you've never experienced really being lost and we could talk about this in the spiritual realm right like being lost uh far from god and stuff and sometimes that's hard for people to wrap their brain around um, years ago, when my kids were young, um, well, we've always done lots of camping and hiking and exploring and all that stuff. But at one time, um, my two oldest boys and my youngest son, so it was us, there was three of the boys, uh, decided to go on a backpacking trip with me, the, myself and the two oldest and the youngest. And I think at the time, the two oldest were probably in about fourth and fifth grade and my youngest was 
I don't know, tiny, little, you know, like uh, probably six, seven, something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, it was his first backpacking trip with his very first own little backpack and everything. And we uh, hiked up into a mountain lake in North Idaho. And a lot of you know uh, that are watching this know where Pyramid Lake is up the Trout Creek drainage uh, north of Bonners Ferry. And so we hiked up into Pyramid Lake and stayed at the lake and did a day there. And the next day we were going to go up into Upper Ball Lake and lower ball lake and so we kind of left a lot of our stuff at camp we hiked up into the lake so as we got up in there there was a lot of snow covering everything um we spent some time up at the lake the, the kids were wet they you know my little guy his boots were soaked his socks were soaked so we built a little fire uh up at upper ball lake on some rocks because there was snow everywhere and the lakes were still frozen in so um we built a fire uh, put all this some sticks around to dry out everybody's socks and gear before we were going to make the hike back down. Um, the kids stayed there. I went and did a little exploring on the lower lake to see if there was frozen in still or whatever. I get back, I realize that they fell asleep. Half the socks are burned and holes burned through them. One of my little guy's boots was melted really bad on the side. And I'm just like, <laughs> great parenting moment, right? Uh, it is how they learn not to put their stuff too close to the fire, I guess. I don't know. So we get all packed back up and we get ready to leave. And and being the smart guy that I have am, I've been up here lots of times over the years. And I I know my kids are exhausted. They're tired. They're, we've got to trudge tr tr through all this deep snow on the way back down. So I decided to just cut off a corner of the trail and save us some time um, but so that we could get back to this face that drops back down into Pyramid Lake. Well, uh, along the way, we I traversed as far as I thought I needed to, and then I headed south thinking I was going in, down into the right bowl, uh, and it wasn't. Um, I, I dropped down too soon, and we sort of lost track of it because we were having fun. We were sliding on our butts down the snow, and of course, going downhill was much easier. Well, it didn't take long, and we figured out we were way... Uh, uh, not where we were supposed to be. And so I uh, grabbed out some gear and then went to grab a compass, found out that my youngest son, Noah, was playing with the compass at the campfire and the boys thought that maybe he left it there. They don't know what happened to it. Well, at this point, we decide we've got to turn around and start hiking all the way back up and double back and come around. It's getting late in the day. We're cold. It 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 was a long hard hike. I had to put my youngest son in my backpack, standing in the backpack to carry him because he couldn't walk anymore. The other guys had frozen feet. It got to the point where it it felt like it was um, like we were going to be uh, lost in the woods for the night and we were going to have to bear grills it, build a fire and do shelter. And, and it, it, we weren't we weren't a hundred percent lost in that we knew where we were. Uh, it just felt like we were um, in a situation where we weren't going to make it out, right? Like it was going to have consequences, and the kids were pretty freaking out at that point. There was definitely some tears shed, um, and we built a fire. We warmed up. We pulled out our food, and the kids realized we had like uh, one protein bar, a bag of fruit snacks, and so they're already rationing out who gets how many fruit snacks at what time for the day and and there was definitely a bit of panic uh amongst the kids and i'm trying to keep it level and and think through how we're going to get out of here because you know i just stay in the night at that point with those temperatures wasn't a wise move with the gear we had so i just doubled down and and loaded everybody up and we just trudged our way and uh took it slow and easy. We eventually made it back to the ridge, found the trail, worked our way back down and in the dark made it back to camp. And when we made it back to our camp, even when we could see our camp, there was just like your spirits lifted. Like there was this excitement and joy of just knowing that you were back on the path, knowing that we were going the right direction that was leading us to safety. And when we got there, man, we had a huge fire. We led a giant fire and dried everything out and warmed up and it was like celebration. And whenever I read these parables, I think of that story. I think of how good it felt to, to see 
safety to see camp to see that we were going to make it out okay you know and it was like just your spirits lifted your heart changed um and i just i i just think about like the idea that when people it says in these in these parables when someone repents they turn from their sin they get back on the path to reconciliation they're back on track walking with god walking back towards God, right? They're, they're coming back into the fold like the lost sheep that Jesus is bringing back to the flock, like the lost coin that she's searched out and found and is putting back in the piggy bank, right? Like, like when someone's on that path, the angels in heaven are looking at it and going, oh yeah, they turned the corner like, like they were watching me with my boys hiking. It's like, desperation they're looking at us going uh we can see where you're going and it is not the right way this is not going to end well for you you didn't make a wise choice there this is going to have consequences this is ah, not good but then when they see you get back on the path repent turn get reoriented so you're right on the path towards god again and it's leading to safety and and um a right relationship with god like it's like the angels looking at that going hallelujah look at where he's at look at where they're going like yay right like they're throwing a big old party um and so i just i would encourage you today to just be thinking about um times where uh you've been lost or you've um known people maybe in your family that were lost and just try and wrap your brain around that sense of desperation where you don't know where you're going um maybe it's been on a trip and you've been in like downtown la and no gps and took a wrong turn and had a panic of like ah, I'm in the wrong neighborhood how did you get out and how good did you feel when you were found or back on the path to safety right like I think it's important that we remember those um, stories and those events in our life because it helps us wrap our brain around the joy that God and angels in heaven have when someone who is lost is found right like it's it's uh, important for us to wrestle with those memories and emotions um, to sync up to some of these stories that we read. So that's that's some food for thought for the day to be thinking about um, the joy of being found, the joy of being back on the path that leads to safety and health and security and righteousness. And so chew on that one today. Have a great Tuesday. I am going to pray for us and we're going to get off and on our way, get some vitamin D and uh, Enjoy your day, whether you're watching this this morning live or later on a replay. Uh, love to hear from you. So let me pray for us and we'll let you go. All right. God, we love you. Thank you so much for this uh, awesome day. Thanks for these stories, Lord. They're such um, just good concrete parables that give a just a real easy to understand kind of visual uh, picture of uh the kind of God you are, a God that searches out desperately looking for the things that are important to you. And when you find them and, um, and you're right with them again, uh, there's a party that it's awesome and that you celebrate like a good dad. And so, um, thanks for that. Keep helping us to, uh, wrestle with the text and be shaped and changed by our time together. And so we just, uh, pray all these things in Jesus name. Amen. All right, everybody, uh, have a fabulous Tuesday. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Bye.